what is up this is a fun video this is a fun one nothing better than talking about one of the greatest wrestlers of all time my favorite wwe superstar of all time second favorite wrestler of all time greatest persona or character in the history of professional wrestling the undertaker and if i'm going to talk about the dead man gotta pay my respects and talk that sound let's talk about the undertaker so Corey requested redeem some points talk about hot tag topic and the topic was the top five matches that the undertaker has had now i tried really hard because there's another topic that he also requested to not have overlap but i'm gonna have to have one because i just have to have one and you guys will understand why Hello. Well, let's start quickly with number five. And these are ranked from five to one. Number one probably is obvious, but I still need to talk about the other ones. And there'll be some overlap, so I can kind of not talk about it in detail. Let's talk about number five. WrestleMania 21, you have The Undertaker, The Legend, against Randy Orton, The Legend Killer. Knocks off Mick Foley, beats HBK attacking other legends, hitting them with the RKO. He's building this persona, breaking away, going solo, and starting a feud with The Undertaker. If you're going to kill any legend, what bigger legend to kill than the guy who has never lost at WrestleMania, one of the greatest in-ring performers of all time, undefeated at WrestleMania, beating the streak? Huge. Huge just momentum you would get for being able, you'd get such a big rub from being able to get that win. Now, he did not win the match, but he still got a huge rub from sharing the ring with The Undertaker. They had great chemistry in the ring. This was the start of a feud that would go on to a casket match to Hell in the Cell. The Undertaker ultimately went over in the feud, even got to the point that Orton ended up, you know practically trying to kill Taker off on TV and almost did it. But, you know, as we all know, the Taker, Taker always comes back. Always. You can't get rid of, can't get rid of the dead. Can't do it. But it was a great match. A lot of reversals in the match. A lot, his, Orton's dad, Cowboy Bob Orton coming in, trying to help him out. Anything he could do to try to beat the Undertaker. The slow pace that Taker is great, has been great at doing able to pick it up a little with Orton. Orton also has that slow, methodical pace, too. So I thought that their their entering chemistry was really good. They could play off of each other. Um, a lot of near falls. But ultimately, he tried to mock the dead man, go for the tombstone. Taker reverses it. Boom. Tombstone. One, two, three. Taker wins. Showed a couple of things. One, obviously, Taker still can get it done in the ring. But more importantly... It started a feud with Orton that helped show that Orton was capable of being a main event guy. He ended up having, you know, other big matches with Taker. But I think that was one of those matches where you looked at Orton and said, you know, I think this can be a big time player in the future. And during the Ruthless Aggression era is one of the guys that you looked at, you know, looking back as one of the stars during that era is matches like that that helped help really define what he was capable of doing in the ring. Thus, he gets those rubs and those spots as he should, and he continued to grow. That's number five. Number four, we have SummerSlam 1997. So going back a ways, Bret Hart versus The Undertaker. Special guest referee, Shawn Michaels. So you already knew there's going to be shenanigans because it's Michaels. Michaels costs Taker the match. <laughs> Um, there's always shenanigans. When, when, there's a, when there's a wrestler that's a special guest referee, you always know. But this is an interesting match for different reasons. One, you kind of expect. You look at Bret Hart, you think technical wrestler. You think Undertake, you think of a big man. And it was kind of a surprise because going in, it's like, I don't know if these two are actually going to mesh in the ring. This is kind of 
This is not a pairing you're used to seeing. Believe it or not, this was one of Taker's best matches. I thought that him and Taker, or him and Brett played well together in the ring. You have Brett, the technician. I don't want him to hit power moves. Typically in wrestling, if you guys, you, the smaller guy will attack the legs. But you take out the legs, you take out the base. Thus, you're not able to, you don't have to worry about the power. Obviously, Brett Hart's finisher is the sharpshooter. So, submission move. Not that the Undertaker taps out a lot. At least face taker. The actual dead man taker. I think twice has tapped out. Once to Brock. And wants to angle. The, the badass taker is a whole other conversation. But yeah, it, it was a really good match. They had good chemistry together. They were able to go slow. They had their moments of being able to pick up the pace. You know, the shenanigans at the end for Brett to win, which ultimately led towards uh, Hell in a Cell between HBK and Taker. But surprisingly when you have big versus small there's usually the big man dominates the match but it was different because it felt more balanced not used to seeing the smaller guy be able to dominate a match against the big man and for it to actually go over well it went over well with the crowd and just the flow of the match it, the, the back and forth was nice but brett was really able to shine i felt like he got a lot out of the undertaker and i know brett referred to this match later because i, I want to say they were backstage and he's, I don't remember the gist of the conversation, but I remember Brett saying he gained a lot of respect for The Undertaker that night because he knew after that, like, this guy's a real athlete. He can get it done in the ring. And as he showed a different side of his entering abilities that just didn't typically get seen at that time from big men. So, you know, big props. Great, great match. Number three. Now we're going to stick with WrestleMania. WrestleMania 14, his first match with Kane. So building up to the story a little bit, what happened was the Hell in a Cell match. Paul Bear kept coming, you know, your Kane is coming, his brother. Kane is coming. And what do you know? Looks like Taker is just destroying HBK and Hell in a Cell. Just just tearing this man apart. Blood everywhere is just beating his ass all over that place. And then the lights go out. You hear the organ playing. The fire taker is looking like, what the hell? And you have this monster. And the red come out, red and black. Rips the door off the cell, gets in the ring with the undertaker, and just destroys him. Taker refused to fight him. Kept taking beatings from him. Refused to fight him. It took toward, for the Royal Rumble to come. For him to be facing Shawn Michaels in a casket match. For literally, it felt like everyone in the back coming out to attack him. Kane steps in to look like he's going to help. Nope. Destroys him again. Puts him in the casket. Locks him in. Sets him on fire. Sets the casket on fire. It took all of that for Taker to finally say, I will fight you. He said, I will not fight my brother. I swore on my parents' grave. I will not fight my brother. They have the match at WrestleMania. And this is when Kane was at the peak of his powers in terms of, you know, wrestling kayfabe. The Undertaker, up to that point, Tombstone was an automatic dub. No one kicks out of Tombstones. Boom. One, two, three. You hit it, cross the arms. You know, that to get the hair back, the eyes roll, the slow one, two, three, Taker wins. It took three tombstones and Kane still almost kicked out of the third in order for Taker to finally get that win. It was a crazy match because like when he hit the first tombstone and he kicked out, it's like, whoa, no one kicks out of tombstone. This is before the era we're in now where everyone becomes a superhero at WrestleMania and kicks out. This is one of the few times prior where someone actually hits a finisher and gets pinned in a reasonable amount of time and kicked out like he kicked out. Oh, crap. Like, what does the Undertaker have to do? And it took three, but damn it, he got him. He got the win. A solid match. It was a botch early in the match. It looked like Taker might have hurt himself, but they were able to get around that. Um, Kane kind of, you know, took over the match at that point. Some, I think it was he was supposed like a slingshot, supposed to go into the ropes, but he missed. And Taker's trying to grab the ropes to kind of break his fall because that wasn't supposed to happen. But they 
manage to handle it pretty well. Taker wins, gets the rub. Ultimately, him and Kane still feud, but hey, it, for a first match, it was pretty damn good. And the, the big versus big, for him to be able to allow Kane to be dominant in the match, still find a way to win as the, as the, the savvy vet. But both came off looking better, and that's what you want in a match like that. You don't want one to go over and the other guy to kind of just you know fall off to the side. In this instance, both wrestlers gain something from it, and that's what you want. I don't need to look at the list anymore because I know the other matches. Match number two, WrestleMania 24. Very underrated match in my opinion. It gets overshadowed by Ric Flair and uh, Shawn Michaels' retirement match. But the main event, one of the few times The Undertaker actually main event at WrestleMania. Edge's first time main eventing WrestleMania. So a big moment for him. You have Edge defending his championship against The Undertaker. So at this point, he never lost The Undertaker. As a fan ever he never lost to Taker. Taker won the Elimination Chamber to become the number one contender. They feud. There's, you know, the sneak attacks as always. Um... Undertaker popping up from the casket, Taker being doing Taker things. And it was so cool because I remember the entrance. Taker comes out first. It's in Florida. You have the fire coming up. He walks down to the ring. He has a long jacket, not the like, you know, big leather jacket with the, you know, where the sleeves on his arm sleeveless. He goes down, does his normal entrance, you know, raise the lights. All that stuff. And he literally stands in the corner and does not move. I remember Coach saying Undertaker has not moved. Like he literally stood in the corner during Edge's whole entrance. It's a long ass ramp. And yeah, Taker's entrance is already long to begin with. But it was a really long one that night. Taker really stood in the corner and waited. It was a great match. A ton of reversals. It's like if you think of wrestling. If you think of it. Even though we all know it's not real. But if you think of it as an actual sport. Edge goes into that match. He is prepared for everything The Undertaker does. He has a counter for every move. Literally, it felt like everything The Undertaker was trying to do, all of his big moves, all of his trademark moves, Edge had a counter for. Great match. Slow pace later on, but early it starts fast because, you know, Taker's been foaming out the mouth to get his hands on Edge for weeks. Dude has cost him cost him the championship he's done so much to make his life hell he finally gets his hands on him it's a back and forth match then you have him hit the tombstone there's no ref literally you have the ref come running down the ramp one of the coolest moments he hits the tombstone goes to pin him and you have the ref literally running running down to make the the count and edge kicks out because you know, obviously it took too long for the ref to get down or you have the edge has Hawkins and Ryder come out, you know, one gets choke slammed into the other, and Edge hits the spear. And it's like, holy crap, the streak might be over. Because at this point, remember, while we talk about the Undertaker streak, to this point, Edge, I believe, was 8 0. He had never lost at WrestleMania either. Taker kicks out, sets up for the second spear. And this is where we start to get into they play with, they start to play with you about Taker and actually may lose a match at Mania. He hits the second spear. And of all the counters Edge had, that last counter, the one that mattered most, The Undertaker, gets hit with the spear, and as he's laying there, slips in the Hell's Gate. Edge with nowhere to go, can't get to the ropes. He has to tap. Taker wins the championship. A rare, in comparison to guys like Cena and Orton and Edge, a rare title win for the dead man and on the biggest stage of all. So it did a couple of things. One, obviously, Taker continues his streak. But secondly, it builds edge, lets you know this guy is a main event guy. He put on a hell of a match with Taker in the main event, even while losing, made the take the Undertaker look like a million bucks and showed that he can hang on the, the big stage. I believe it's the only main event match that he had at Mania, because after that, yeah, he had the triple throw of Big Show and Cena. Edge against Jericho. Jericho won. Edge lost that triple threat. And then um, the unfortunate one, you know, his last one before he retired against Boro Del Rio was the show opener. So, you know, Edge showed that he was capable of being that dude. 
And then the last match, the obvious match. Not only is it Taker's best match, it is the best match in WrestleMania history, which we'll talk about at a later time this week. WrestleMania 25, what can I say? Shawn Michaels and HBK literally tore the house down. One of the few times that I've watched a match where when it was over, I stood up in my house, in my room, and just started clapping. Like, I had no words. I was in total shock. It was a roller coaster of emotions. The near falls. Taker kicking out of Sweet Chin Music twice. The suddenness of one of the Sweet Chin Music's hitting. Um, or Super Kicks. Taker hitting him with a tombstone and pinning him immediately. And Michael still kicking out. A rare kick out of a tombstone. The pacing back and forth. Showing that Michaels Rue was willing to do anything to win the match to win on a count after the botched over the top rope jump. Literally, the match was perfect except for two things. It's so bad. I've watched the match so many times. There are only two. The match was perfect minus two things. One, the jump over the top rope was botched. Taker just couldn't get up anymore after that point. Never did it again. Rightfully so. And two, a DDT where um, Michaels wasn't getting, able to fully get him down. So Taker, you know, try to sell it the best he could, given the moment, lack of momentum. Outside of that, like I'm telling you, it was a damn near, it was as perfect a match as I've seen wrestled in a long time. And they had the crowd eating out the palm of their hands. Like it was, it stole the show. You had two championship matches afterwards. And even though the storylines to them were built up great, everything leading into this match. Mr. WrestleMania, the showstopper, the greatest performer in WrestleMania history, doesn't always win, but Michaels always puts on the best matches versus The Undertaker, the streak. And let's be honest, at this point, Michaels, he's done everything in his career. Championships, stole the show, literally carried broomsticks to five-star matches. And now he gets to take on Taker for a streak. Never lost to The Undertaker. Not until that night. It's first time The Undertaker beat Shawn Michaels. That's the second time at WrestleMania he's been able to conquer his demons at um, at the biggest stage. It's part of the reason why the streak was the streak. That was like anyone. If you were a wrestling fan, if you're new to wrestling, that is the first match I will have you watch. Not only as a Taker fan, but as a wrestling fan. That is one of the greatest matches I have ever watched in my lifetime. So that's it for the top five Taker matches. We'll talk later on this week about the top five WrestleMania matches. So obviously, you already know Taker and HBK is number one, but what are the other four? So I don't have to talk about Taker and HBK much. I'll kind of talk about it a little bit, but there's not as much reason to talk about it. We know that's number one, but we'll talk about the other four. Thanks for watching. I'll see you later this week.